Good evening and welcome to the Fisk Boulevard Improvements Public Meeting. My name is Kevin Powell and I'm the Project Manager for the Florida Department of Transportation. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to explain the proposed intersection improvements at Levitt Parkway and Lakemore Boulevard and the planned mid-block crossing near Barbara Jenkins Street. We want to hear from you and there are many ways to provide feedback. The project team will respond to questions in writing and all written comments will become part of the public meeting record. I will now turn it over to our project team to begin the presentation. Meeting information is being provided in multiple ways to allow the community to receive information about these projects and provide input. This meeting is being conducted in person and virtually through GoToWebinar. The presentation is also available on the project's web pages at www.cflroads.com forward slash project, forward slash 450417-1, or 4513-10-1. This public meeting was advertised and is being conducted in accordance with state and federal requirements, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Melissa McKinney, District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 501, Deland, Florida, 32720, by phone at 386-943-5077, or email melissa.mckinney at dot.state.fl.us. You may also contact Stefan Kulikowski, State Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 605 Swanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450, by phone at 850-414-4742, or email at stefan.kulikowski at dot.state. .fl.us. This information is shown on a sign at the in-person location, on the project website, and in the meeting notifications. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to explain the project goals, present the department's recommended improvements to help achieve those goals, and hear from the community about the proposed changes. FDOT is proposing two projects on Fisk Boulevard also known as State Road 519 in Brevard County. The first project is at the intersection of Fisk Boulevard and Levitt Parkway, Lakemore Boulevard, in the city of Rockledge. The Financial Project Identification Number, or FPID, for this project is 450417-1. Currently, the intersection of Fisk Boulevard and Levitt Parkway and Lakemore Boulevard does not have a traffic signal. The purpose of this project is to signalize the intersection to enhance safety for all users. Project improvements are based on recommendations from a 2021 intersection safety and traffic signal warrant analysis. FDOT proposes to install new traffic signals at this intersection to provide safer turning movements. The project also proposes adding new crosswalks and pedestrian signals and restriping existing crosswalks, filling in sidewalk gaps, and updating pedestrian curb ramps to meet current Americans with Disabilities Act or ADA standards. The proposed traffic signals will be mounted on single mast arms. They will provide protected left turn phases for safer turns onto side streets from northbound and southbound Fisk Boulevard. Due to the offset road alignment, Levitt Parkway and Lakemore Boulevard will have separate green light phases. Levitt Parkway traffic will get the green light first, followed by Lakemore Boulevard. Proposed pedestrian improvements include installing eastbound and westbound crosswalks across Fisk Boulevard, installing pedestrian crossing signals 
at all four crosswalks. Constructing a short sidewalk connection on Lakemore Boulevard and constructing all pedestrian curb ramps to meet current ADA standards. These improvements will enhance safety for all users, especially those pedestrians traveling to nearby schools on Fisk Boulevard. Moving forward, the design of this project is in progress and anticipated to be complete in summer 2025 at an estimated cost of $783,000. The improvements for this project will be within the existing right-of-way. Construction for this project is planned for early 2026, with an estimated cost of $983,000. The second project begins at Barbara Jenkins Street and ends at State Road 520 or King Street in the city of Coco. The FPID for this project is 451310-1. Currently, this section of Fisk Boulevard is a four-lane divided roadway with a center two-way left turn lane. The posted speed limit is 40 miles per hour. Based on data collected by the FDOT for a December 2021 safety study, from 2013 to 2017, there were 66 crashes along this corridor with 44% of those crashes resulting in injury or fatality. Between 2018 and 2020, there were 79 crashes, also with 44% resulting in injury or fatality. Between those two time periods, there was a notable increase in the number of crashes involving pedestrians and bicyclists. Based on recommendations from the safety study, and to enhance safety for all users within the project area, FDOT is proposing several improvements including reducing the posted speed limit from 40 miles per hour to 35 miles per hour within the project limits, constructing a new pedestrian activated mid-block crossing with an overhead rectangular rapid flashing beacon or RRFB, and a median refuge constructing a raised concrete separator on the northbound approach to the signal at King Street, constructing an 8-foot sidewalk to accommodate bicycles beyond Stone Street, and widening and extending the northbound right turn lane beyond Stone Street. This artist rendering shows the proposed mid-block crossing location with overhead RRFB, just north of Barbara Jenkins Street, between the Dollar General and Provost Park. The crossing will also have a concrete pedestrian refuge in the median. Curbs and curb ramps will be constructed at the crosswalk to meet current ADA standards. So, what is an RRFB? As shown in the artist's rendering, an RRFB consists of two rapid flashing yellow lights that are mounted below yellow pedestrian crossing signs along the side of the road. The overhead RRFB is mounted to a mast arm with flashing lights and signs for higher visibility. The flashing lights remain dark until they are activated by a pedestrian wishing to cross. Once a pedestrian pushes the button, audible warnings are activated. FDOT will also be installing lights in the roadway to increase driver awareness. While motorists are legally required to stop for pedestrians in any crosswalk in the state of Florida, RRFBs increase driver awareness and visibility at mid-block crossings. Let's look at how a pedestrian will interact with the RRFB. Upon approaching the crosswalk, the beacon will be dark and cars will be proceeding normally. Pedestrians are encouraged to push the button to activate the beacon, thus making their intent to cross more noticeable to motorists. Upon pressing the button to activate the signal, pedestrians may enter the crosswalk when motorists have come to a complete stop or, if no traffic is present, closer than a safe stopping distance. Pedestrians will notice the flashing yellow lights or supplemental lights on the side of the RRFB and on the overhead RRFB 
to let them know the device has been activated. The flashing lights on the beacons will continue for a short time, allowing pedestrians to cross. Finally, after pedestrians have completed crossing and the RRFB has stopped flashing, any approaching pedestrians will have to press the button again to activate the RRFB, repeating the cycle. Now let's look at how a motorist will interact with the RRFB. The RRFB's default state is dark until a pedestrian presses a button to cross. The motorist may proceed with caution if no pedestrians are in the crosswalk. Once a pedestrian presses the button, indicating they're ready to cross, the yellow lights begin to flash rapidly. The motorist must stop or clear the crossing if they are too close to stop safely. Motorists must remain stopped while pedestrians cross. The beacon will continue to flash and motorists may proceed once the pedestrians clear their lane. Finally, the beacons will return to dark and motorists may proceed with traffic when there are no pedestrians in the crosswalk. The beacons will remain dark until a new pedestrian approaches the crossing and presses the button. Every bicyclist and pedestrian is important to someone. FDOT encourages everyone to visit www.alerttodayflorida.com for more information about RRFBs and Florida's pedestrian and bicycle-focused initiatives. The design of this project is in progress and anticipated to be complete in summer 2025 at an estimated cost of $720,000. The improvements for this project will be within the existing right-of-way. Construction for this project is funded for early 2026 with an estimated cost of $1.2 million. We encourage your input and feedback about this project, and there are multiple ways for you to participate. All public comments and questions are part of the public meeting record and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by June 3, 2024, 11 days after the public meeting, will become part of the project's public meeting record. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing. In-person attendees are encouraged to speak with project team members to ask questions and provide input. To submit a comment for the public meeting record, please complete a printed comment form and return it to project staff. You may also contact FDOT project manager Kevin Powell directly by email at kevin.powell at dot.state.fl.us or by U.S. mail at the Florida Department of Transportation, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 542, The Land, Florida, 32720. You may also call Mr. Powell at 386-943-5425 to provide verbal comments during normal business hours. The contact information is also available on the public meeting notification that you may have received by mail. To learn more about these projects, go to www.cflroads.com, type the project number 4504-17-1 or 4513-10-1 in the search box at the top right and click Go. Then click on the project name. Public meeting materials are posted on the website now. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, Thank you for attending this public meeting and providing your input on these projects. If you have comments or questions after the meeting, please submit them by June 3, 2024. Have a good evening.